Right then, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add the side archways, we're going to add the floor, uh, maybe where the water is going to go, and maybe the back plane that's going to go against the back wall. And then from there, we'll be able to start adding the lighting and materials and try to build up how the final look of the image is going to be. So, we do already have an archway, so I think that because there are already side arches, let's try to use this to create what we want. So let's just duplicate this. And then let's just unhide these to the point, actually going to local view, unhide these to the point at which it becomes an archway again. So there we go. So we don't need we don't need this one or this one, but the solidify we can use the bevel and the subdivision surface. I think these ones are great. So let's go back into the scene and let's move this over here. You might notice, you might notice this a lot in Blender. So this is called Z fighting, where basically there are overlapping faces exactly. So there's a face exactly over another face and Blender's trying to figure out which face should go forwards. So if you see that, just remember that you just need to move it away and that will stop. But that is quite an ugly thing that throws off a lot of people. So let's just do R and then Z, rotate it 90 degrees. Now I can bring this over here and I can just try to place an archway roughly to where I want it to be. Sprue over here, and I want it to be quite high like this. Bring this over here, and there we have it. Right, let's just bring this, actually just delete this edge. I'm gonna select this edge with Alt and then X, dissolve edges. There is this kind of ugly shading edge, but it's not important, we won't see that anyway. Uh, let's just do the same thing for this one because it'd just be easier to edit. So let's select these edges. Let's bring this over here like this. Then what I wanna do is just select these and bring these down. Right then, so in my in my uh, test image, what I did, I actually mirrored this, so there was actually two of them. So actually, let's hide these, and then I want to I want to mirror on this edge. So what I can do is I can select this edge, and I can do Shift S cursor to select it, and then click right click and click Set Origin 3D Cursor. We can see now it's now it's made a mistake. So the mirror that I have here is working in the wrong place because the origin point was telling it where to mirror, but now I want to copy this whole thing over here. So I can apply this mirror. So now we have the whole shape. Now if I was to set origin 3D cursor, now the mirror modifier is not gonna get broken. So let's just add another one, generate, mirror, and now it will mirror from that point. So we can bring this in, let's actually select all of it. Uh, and if we move this over, we'll, we'll see that the, the, the faces are going to be overlapping. But there is a button we can press inside here called clipping, which will mean the edges on the edge will always get stuck and they will no longer overlap. Let's just bring this in a bit closer. I don't, don't want to bring this in too much, otherwise if there are three points, if these points go over here, there'll be overlapping edges which can cause some errors. But if you do really want it to be closer, you can enable that bisect again and it will remove those faces. But actually, yeah, let's just... Actually, yeah, let's just put it somewhere like here and let's just enable this so it's always there. Right then, that I think is great. Let's then bring that to the top because if we added the solidify, you can start to see some weird shading going on here because we're telling it that we want this to be, we're telling it we want this to be solidified, Oh, which is gonna be strange. Let's actually select everything and, ah, so there are overlapping faces. So it doesn't know what to do here. So we're, So what's happened here is that there are actually some edges going to be overlapping so there there are edges on edges and blender doesn't like that so we need to, we need to tell it to remove all unnecessary vertices and this is a very very common problem the amount of times i see a problem and it involves overlapping faces or edges or vertices so we can very quickly fix that press a to select everything we could press m to merge and then merge by distance so that would tell blender any vertices which are within 0.0001 meter of another to remove it. And you'll see that there was a little thing that appeared at the bottom, so I do merge by distance. You'll see that it says removed three vertices, which will be this one, this one, and this one. So those were close enough to be merged. I can then also slide this up. You can see the closer they get, the more they get merged, but then you start breaking it. So I think that's fine. Three have been removed. But now, if I was to mirror this, there is, there is still an inside edge. So now we're saying we want it to be solidified, add a bevel and then mirror afterwards, which means there's gonna be this edge because it has created the edge already. So the mirror modifier needs to go first. So let's add the mirror modifier. And if we enable this, we can see we created this space, this shape. So all these are already joined. I can then label the solidify so there's not gonna be any walls inside. And now I can add the bevel and then I can add the subdivision again on top. Right then. I hope that you're following along. Like I said, as long as you get to this shape and you have all these settings as I have, you, end, you will end up with the shape. 
uh, but do not worry if you do not fully understand all of this right now. The modifier stack is something you'll be doing day in, day out throughout your whole Blender career, so this will make sense at some point, I promise. Right then, so we have this on this side, but we also want to mirror it over this side. So we know that so we know that this is already in the center, and we want to center against that point, so click on this one, and then I'm going to add another mirror modifier, generate mirror, and then I'm going to choose this object here. So now we're mirroring exactly on that object. If we move this, we can start to see everything mirror being changed against that point. And this doesn't matter if it's at the bottom because this, this whole geometry is not going to be affected by this one at all. Whereas if this was much closer and the geometry is going to be going inside its, itself, then it might be important. You might need to adjust the position, but I think that's, that's fine for now. So we're starting to get what looks like a cathedral type shape or something like that. So I think that's looking pretty cool. The next thing you want to do is I want to add like a back wall here, back floor. So I do like the height of this. So I'm going to reuse this plane because I know it's already at the top. Whereas I could just could just go here and start adding a plane myself. But I do sometimes find it sometimes easier just to duplicate what you've already got. So I like, actually I like this whole staircase. I want to add this whole staircase. So I'm going to get this one, go top view, and then shift D to duplicate it, R 90 degrees. We can see it's been mirrored. We don't really need this one to be mirrored at all. So let's just delete that. And then let's bring that over here. Let's do, let's actually do right click, set origin to the center of the mass. And it doesn't, this one doesn't matter if it's not directly in the center because I don't think we're gonna see the edges anyway. So let's just go into edit mode and let's bring this out. You can use the mirror modifier here if you wanted to. Let's just bring this over here like that. And let's bring this in and we might need to bring this up so if you remember if we bring this up we need to also bring this one because their modifiers working together so something like that all right and these are already only the same height so i think that's pretty nice and i think i think that's looking good so what i want to do now is add a floor so i'm going to hold down shift and click on the bottom of here i can do shift a add a mesh add a plane and i could do go to this view and just scale this up just so that there's like a bottom floor onto everything. And is that actually directly in the bottom of everything? Yep. So these are kind of sitting on this floor plane. Okay, now let's add the water. So I want the water to be basically, if I basically just before the top level of these of these uh, staircases. So I'm going to do click on this plane, this one. I'm going to do Shift D and bring this up. Now you might be thinking that this water has no thickness, but that's not actually important because of how the shaders work and how materials work inside a blender. Water, if you were to add, it's called absorption. So the as light goes through the object, basically photons of light are getting absorbed into the, the water. So the deeper the water, the less light gets through to the bottom. So if there's no back edge, blender is going to assume that this object has thickness. So if there's an object further away from the surface, that's going to appear darker. So we're just going to add a plane for the surface for now. And then what I want to do is I do actually want to cut out cut out these top parts because these top parts are going to have grass on the top. So let's just select this top face and press I and then I can press E and extrude that down. But we can't actually see it because this is the way. So I'm going to click on this, press H to hide. And then I think that should be fine. I think that's fine for now. And I'm going to do Alt H to bring that back. OK, now I do want this to be in the center. So let's actually let's actually find this because this is at the center of this. So I'm going to click on this, do Shift S, selection to cursor. And then let's bring this up like here. And then I can just bring this edge up like that. Right then. Right, so now I need to cut these out. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually, to save myself time, I'm going to mirror this object. So let's just delete, add a loop cut here, Control R, add a loop cut here. Let's delete these as well and do delete faces. Now, if I set, set origin to 3D cursor, if I then add another mirror modifier, I can then mirror like this. Now, if I was to add some loop cuts, control R, just add some roughly over the inside wall of here. Cause it's basically like the water is going to go right up to the edge of this object and then do that. Press three, select this face X and delete the face. Now we have a hole in all of them. Now I do also need to inset this face here as well. So let's just go tab into edit mode, press I to inset and then E Oop, bring, bring that down. And then let's just, let's just, I think we won't see this edge anyway. So let's just shift D to duplicate this, bring this on the Y axis and E and then Y to bring that out. 
if you, if you can't extrude, make sure it's on edge select there. There we go. So now we have water here, here, and that will look great. Okay, now what you might have noticed is that the stuff which is going just off of the camera is very messy. It looks like there's nothing there. And that's generally what a lot of 3D artists do. If we're not gonna see it, then we're not gonna bother with creating this space because we're never gonna see it. Now that also applies to a lot of work that you do for some customers. So they are, I might ask you to render a room and you might render a camera facing into the room and you won't do the stuff behind the camera because it's a complete waste of time. But you will, you'll probably build the room correctly um, so that the walls are behind the camera and all that stuff because the, cu because the customer may ask you to turn the camera around and render that direction. So it might be worth at that point building it because they might ask for it, but I'm not gonna fill that part with furniture because we, we may never see it unless the customer asks and then I will obviously charge them for that time. But I know that I'm never gonna see outside this edge so I'm just not going to bother creating it. Quite funny because if you actually watch some breakdowns of some of the um, some movies online, some VFX or where they create some big 3D scenes, when they when they show you behind the scenes, they are also a complete mess. And it's also important for them not to spend too much time doing stuff which they're never going to see as well. Right then, so we have everything in the scene. I think we could start adding materials and lighting and then the props and then start making this scene looking pretty good. So let's go to the next module.